Everything on here should be posted on the agenda website. Uh, just so you know, I have grabbed a couple of files from this that I'll be working off of here. Uh, this text file, le.info, which is the file that we're going to process. Uh, the solution, which is just a little uh, Python script or module. And then I'll be working in the uh, notebook out of, uh, if you have, like we said, the more recent version of IPython, grab version 3. Uh, older ones, you can grab version 2. So if I look in this directory here, like I said, I have the breakout solution, a uh, little Python script, le.info, and the notebook. So again, just getting used to how our workflow, how we fire these things up. I'm going to open up the notebook, get it started, have the breakout solution already loaded. And we can go over this very quickly. Uh, I just am going to import this directly into the my namespace in the notebook. Uh, the way that it was written is very nice so that we can do that. Uh, and then I'm just going to use the capability of the double question mark to read so we can look at the code directly uh, within the framework of the notebook. So that just pops up this little window here at the bottom. Uh, this particular function, reverse extension, takes one argument, uh, file name, you can see it's nicely uh, documented here with a, both a doc string and extensive comments. Uh, we're going to split uh, this string file name uh, on the period and grab uh, the last entry. Okay, you can imagine a file name might have multiple periods in it, uh, so we're really just grabbing the extension, the last one from that. Uh, we're going to strip everything off of the file name. Sorry, we're going to strip the extension off to get the base name. We're going to reverse, right? We're going to go from beginning to end in increments of minus one, just the extension, and then return uh, those two concatenated together. Uh, so that's how we reverse the extension of a file name. There are other ways to do it than just one of them. Uh, count occurrences. Okay, we're going to open the file in read-only mode. We're going to read all the contents into a single string. And then we're going to use this count uh, method of a string uh, to grab everything to search for all the substrings in that string. I'm going to use good coding practice, close the file, free up the memory, return the count to that. Uh, all right, a couple other things to grab here. Um, Find and have numbers. This one's a little more complicated. We're uh, doing this on a line by line basis here in the final file. Uh, we're actually making use of regular expressions in this case to do it. If you haven't seen regular expressions before, uh, there are many, like I said, many other ways, but this is just a very efficient way. Uh, essentially, what this is telling us is we want to grab all of the occurrences where we see one or more decimal digits in this particular line. That's what that backslash D stands for, plus says one or more of them. Uh, and in that case, we're going to grab them, we're going to divide them by two, uh, and we're going to return the new line where they've been divided by two. Uh, and then what this looks like in full is two operations. So we pass it a file name. That's a one single argument to it. We open that file. We reverse the extension. We take the new file, open it again, loop over every line, make the desired replacements. In this case, we want to replace uh, hate with love. Um, this is because of this is. Uh, it's being replaced twice through doing this. Divide all the numbers by two, write the new line out print some results, and close all our files. So what that looks like is we take a file la.info, which as you can see has this long text. Um, you can read through it if you're so inclined. We then actually run the do operations 
uh, function on this. It spits out there are two occurrences of astrology, three physics, okay? That's good, we're at least winning by a little bit. Uh, this is the output file that it wrote, and we can cast or display that as well. Uh, and that will show you that we've replaced uh, love with hate, uh, removed every other line, and that's why it's the full thing. Uh, an extremely readable. All right, so I think Josh is up next. What's the next? Uh... You want to answer a question? Yeah, are there any questions about that? Sorry. Yes. So you're looking at the uh, half number, is that right? Uh, this is the split uh, within the regular expression module. It's not a split function of a string. They have the same name, but slightly different return. So if you look within the documentation for the split within uh, regular expression, it will tell you. It actually returns a very rich syntax uh, in that case. Anything else? Oh, sorry, yes. Yeah, basically if you pass it a string, you can search for very complex uh, patterns of ASCII characters within that string. In this case, we're only looking for something very simple. We're only looking for a decimal place. But you could look for you know, any pattern of numbers, letters, uh, tabs, any sort of normal ASCII character in whatever pattern you want within a string and return that in a, in a nice way. That's what regular expression does. And there are predefined, you know, uh, like I said, slash D was a decimal. There are other things for white space. There, if you want, you know, uh, any letter, any uppercase letter, any lowercase letter. If you search for the documentation on regular expressions within Python, you'll find that. Uh, you'll find it's also very similar uh, to what's what's out there in Perl and other programming languages as well. All right.